Okay. So, brother. <laughs> Now this is the transaction, okay? Elaf is the accountant of Icon Training Center. The owner of the business invested cash ten thousand dollar. So which of the two elements will be affected? Cash, which is asset. So cash, which is asset, and capital, which is equity, right? So cash asset it is increasing. So we will debit the cash, right? And cash, which is sorry, capital, which is equity. Now the entry will be if you see this, we will debit cash asset and we will credit. Yes. Capital, which is equity, right? Yeah. So here we will write debit. How much is that? Ten thousand. Yeah. And cash asset, cash current asset account debit, yeah. right? And then you see here, capital equity increase, so it is credited, right? So here we will put 10,000 as capital equity account. This will be the double entry. Now, if you see this double entry, at the same time, we have to update our ledgers, okay? So ledger shows that we should keep the all the records separately related to each and every account. Now we have there are two accounts, cash and equity, right? So we have to create cash account as well as a capital, which is equity account. Now just have a look at cash account. It is being debited with ten thousand, and the reference is because of capital or equity. So what is the need of creating ledger? We create ledger to understand four things. Number one, we should understand its relevance to a particular account. Number two, what are the movements? Is it increasing or decreasing? Number three, what are the reasons of those movements? And number four, what is the existing balance of that account? Now, if you just look at this cash account, this is called ledger. Yeah. So if you just have a look at this cash account, right? Mm -hmm. So it is being debited with 10,000 and the reference is capital. Now it means, you know, cash is our asset account. And this is what we have learned that whenever cash increases, it gets debited. Or whenever there is an increase in cash account, we record on the debit side of the cash account. So we will put 10,000 on the debit that shows that our cash current asset account is increasing by 10,000. And the reason is capital, which is equity. And it was happened on event one. And the existing balance in the cash account is 10,000 debit because 10,000 is being shown on the debit side and the debit side is greater than 10 by 10,000. The same balance will be shown here. And here we have Balance carried down 10,000. Okay. Now in this double entry, in this journal, we have cash account as well as we have capital account. So if you can see that now we have to create another account, which is called capital account. And it is being credited with 10,000. Just have a look here. Capital account. We put 10,000 on the credit side. So we have learned that when capital or equity is increasing, it is always shown on the credit side. So our capital is increasing by 10,000 and the reason is because of cash. So our owner has invested as a cash account, as a cash in the business. That is why the capital of the business is also increasing, right? Now, we have event two. Just have a look here, event two. Now the event two says, 
that the building purchased, sorry, the business purchased building for $6,000. Now in this transaction, the first step is we have to recognize how many elements of financial statements are there, what movement these elements are having, and how shall I apply debit and credit to? Now the first question, how many elements of the financial statements are there? Just do the component analysis. The business is purchasing building for 6,000. So you are purchasing building, which is again an asset, right? This is what we have already learned, the definition of an asset. I can show you so that we can also revise it again. But this is what we have discussed in, uh, in the beginning of the lesson, right? Yeah. So that, that is how we discuss what is the definition of asset. So there are four contents in the definition of asset. First of all, it should be our economic resource. It should be under the possession of the business as a result of past event against which we should expect future benefit. Now, in this particular transaction, the business is purchasing building, right? For $6,000. You can, you can just have a look at this transaction again. It so the business purchase building for six thousand dollars, right? So it means that you are purchasing building. So building is your economic resource, yes. Building is now is under your possession, yes. Now you have purchased as a result of past event, and the past event was you have paid cash for that, and against which you are expecting future benefit. So every content analysis is. Uh, is clear now. So we can say that building is our non current asset. And at the same time, we are paying cash, $6,000. So cash is also our economic resource under the possession of the business as a result of past event and against which we can get the benefit, future benefit. So in this particular transaction, if you can look, two sets. Thank you so much. So if you just have a look at this, so the first asset we have recognized is building and this is our non current asset and it is increasing. So we will record as a debit and second asset is our cash, which is current asset, but it is not increasing rather it is decreasing. So we will record on the credit side of the journal entry. Is this clear? Sir? Now just have a look here. Now the journal entry event two, the amount is 6,000. This 6,000 was debited. And the reason was building non-current asset account. And 6,000 is also credited. And the reason is cash current asset account. Right, sir? Now you have a look at the, at the ledgers. Now we have to create another account, which is called building account. And this building is being debited. So we put 6,000 on the debit side of the building. And the reason is cash current asset account. So we have put here cash current asset account. At the same time, if you talk about cash current asset account, it is being credited by 6,000. So we put 6,000 on the credit side. And the reason is building non current asset account. This is the reference. So we put the reference here. Now, if you look at the cash account, now just have a look at the balancing. Before that, it was debited by 10,000, right? Because of this reason. So we debit cash by 10,000 and the reason was capital equity. Now cash is being credited by 6,000 and the reason is building. So if you check the balance, the debit side is heavier. The total will be 10,000. It will also be shown here. But the credit side also showing building 6,000. So the balance we have will be 4,000. That is how we do ledger accounts. Okay. Now let's move to the, to the third transaction, event three. Because we have five elements of financial statements. So this is our frame of reference. We always consider five elements, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. 
So out of these five elements, we have to recognize that what elements are there, right? Now in event three, it says the business purchase office equipment $2,000. So the first question, how many elements of financial statements are there? So the first thing that business is purchasing office equipment. So for cash, now office equipment is coming in the business and cash is going out. Now we have two things, office equipment and cash. We have to record these two things. So if we again analyze the definitions, so office equipment and furnitures, right? Okay, we can also add here office equipment. Office equipment, right? So is, uh, is it our economic resource? Yes, it is now under the position of the business. Yes, it was as a result of past event. Yes, now we expect future benefit. Yes, but this is our non-current asset because we can expect benefit to be taken from this asset over the longer period of time. And at the same time, the cash is decreasing and cash is also our asset, right? So again, cash is fulfilling our definition of asset, but the important thing is that it is our current asset. Now, if we do the content analysis of this transaction, now we have office equipment, which is our non-current asset and it is increasing. It is increasing by how much? $2,000. And at the same time, we have cash, which is our current asset. But this is not increasing, rather it is decreasing. So we will decrease it. So we have defined what movement these elements have. Office equipment is increasing, cash decreasing. How shall I apply debit credit rule? The office equipment is increasing, so it will be debited. Cash is decreasing, so it will be credited. Now let, let's put it on the journal ledger. So we have amount 2000. Here we put office equipment, non-current asset account. This is our non-current asset. At the same time, put 2000 here. Sorry. And the reason is cash current asset account. Now we have another asset, another account, which is called office equipment account. It is being debited by 2000. So you can see the 2000 is being appearing here, right? And the reason is cash asset account. And now if you analyze the cash asset account, now it has got three entries. It has got three movements. In event one, it was debited because of, because of capital. So our cash was increased because of capital. Now in event two, it was credited because of 6,000. So you can see that cash is credited 6,000 because the reason is building, we were purchasing the building. Now here we are purchasing office equipment and we are paying cash. So cash, which is our current asset, it is decreasing by 2,000. And now the balance we have is 2,000. This is very important. Now this is the function of the ledger that every entry is being shown here, right? Now let's move for the fourth event. Now in the fourth event, it says, okay, there is a point of concern. Now, if you have a look at event two, it says that building, the business purchase building for how much? 6,000. So here we are paying cash, right? Let me write it here. Here we are making payment, right? So remember, Making payment does not mean an expense. It always means decrease in cash asset. Cash current asset. Now this is a misconception. Most of the people, most of the students, they think that when we are making payment, it is our expense. No. When we are making payment, it will never consider as an expense, rather it will consider the decrease in cash current asset. This is very important. So because here we are purchasing the building and we are making payment of 6,000, so we do not consider as an expense, rather we consider as 
decrease in cash asset. Now, similarly, if you just have a look at this transaction, again, we were purchasing office equipment and we were paying cash. So cash doesn't mean here that we are making some expense, rather it means that the cash front asset is decreasing. Now let's move to the next transaction. It says that the business took bank loan from CBQ $5,000. Now CBQ is a bank which is called Commercial Bank of Qatar. And the amount is 5000 Now the, there are three questions. How many elements of financial statements are there? What movement these elements are having and how shall I apply debit credit to, right? So again, we have five elements, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. Now let me revise it for you again, because we need to understand these definitions. Now the assets are defined as economic resource under the possession of the business as a result of past event against which we expect to get economic benefit. So if all four components are crystal clear, if the definition is being applied and an asset should pass all four criteria. It should be our economic resource. It should be under the possession of the business. It should come as a result of past event and against which we should be expecting future economic benefit. So we will recognize it as an asset. So there are two types of assets, non-current assets, which are used up over the longer period of time and current assets, which are used up normally within one accounting period. Now, the second concept is liability and liability is defined under ISB framework is it should be our present obligation as a result of past event against which we need to settle the liability. So if all these three criteria are met, we will recognize it as a liability. If any one of missing, we will not recognize as a liability. Now we have two types of liabilities. One is called non-current liabilities and another one is called current liabilities. So non-current liabilities are those which are paid over the period of years, 10 years, five years, like bank loan, right? So here in this particular transaction, we are talking about that we are getting loan from CPQ. So when we take loan from the bank, it will become our present obligation, yes. As a result of past payment, yes, because we have made the contract and we have taken the loan. And against which we need to pay the loan, yes. So it will qualify the definition of liability, but it has to be paid over the period of years. The second liability we have is the current liability, which are paid within one year, right? Now let's have a look again. Here we have the transaction. So the business took bank loan from CBQ $5,000. So the first thing we recognize here is bank loan, CBQ, bank loan, which is our non-current liability. And this non-current liability is increasing because we have taken the loan from the bank. So it has become our present obligation as a result of past payment and against which we need to settle. So when the liability increases, we always record on the credit side of the account. And second, when we take loan, that loan comes in our business in the form of cash. And cash is our current asset, so it is increasing, so we will record on the debit side. So once the analysis is done, we can recognize on the journal and ledger. Now here we will put debit, how much was the amount? 6,000? 5,000. 5,000 on the debit side. And the reason is cash, current asset account, because your cash, current asset is increasing. And we'll also put here 5,000. Why? Because we have taken bank loan from CPQ and this is your non-current liability account. So this was the entry. This will be the entry. Now just have a look here. Cash is recorded on the debit side. So you can see the cash account we recorded on the debit side. How much is the amount? 5,000. The reason is the bank loan from CPQ, which is non-current liability. And now we have to create another account that should be your bank loan from CPQ. Now you just have a look here. We put on the credit side because it was credited in the ledger, sorry, journal. And the reason was because we were taking cash. Now again, if you look at balancing the account, which is very important. Now in event one, Cash was increasing because of 10,000 and the reason was the capital was coming into the business. In event two, we record cash on the credit size 6,000 and the reason was we purchased building. 
and event three again we record cash on the credit side two thousand because we purchased office equipment. Now cash is increasing five thousand, but the source of the cash is bank loan. We have taken bank loan from CBQ five thousand dollar. What is the balance in our account? It is seven thousand. How? Ten thousand increase, five thousand increase. So total increase fifteen thousand. So we'll put total here. And we have to subtract, these are the payments, 6,000 and 2,000. So you will subtract 8,000 from 15,000. And still we have cash balance, which is called 7,000, right? Everything is clear, Masha. Now let's analyze another transaction so that we should clear our concept more. Now we have event five. This is very important. Now it says event five. The business purchase goods for resale purpose 3000 on credit. Now, when we say on credit, it means we are not paying cash. We are not making payment. So if we are not making payment, it means our cash asset will not get affected, right? So here we have, we are purchasing goods for resale purpose. So when we purchase goods for resale purpose, it will become our expense. Now we need to understand what is expense and income, by the way. So here we have the definition of income and expense, right? In order to define income and expense, we always need to consider five constructs to be covered, five constructs to be defined. There are five criteria to define income and expense. The first one, that what is the movement in economic benefit? This is what we need to consider. So if there is a decrease in economic benefit, we will call recognize it as an expense. This is the first criterion. The second criterion that it should be incurring during one year because we have to follow the matching principle. Now matching principle says that you have to match your current year income with your current year expense. You cannot match your previous year income with current year expense or your previous year expense with the current year income. So the during one year is very important. So in this particular scenario, we are purchasing goods. Why we are purchasing goods? For resale purpose. So this is our decrease in economic benefit. Because the intention is to sell it as soon as possible. The intention is not to keep in the business for the longer period of time. So we purchase goods with the intention to sell it immediately. So this is our expense because this is cost of generating income. So the movement in economic benefit is decreased. So it is incurring, it is occurring within one year. What effect expense will have on asset? It will always decrease your asset. So either you are paying, I mean, when you purchase your goods, either you pay in cash or you purchase on credit. But in our this particular case, you are purchasing on credit. So it will increase our liability. So expense will have two effect. Uh, expense can have one effect out of these two facts. Either it can decrease your asset or it should increase your liability. But at the end, it should always decrease your equity. This is for sure. So income has got totally opposite nature as compared to expense. It will always increase your movement in the economic benefit. It should occur during one year because you have to match expense and the income. What effect an income in will have on asset it will always increase. It will always decrease your liability and it will always increase your equity. Now, in this particular case, we are purchasing goods. Now, let me enter here purchases. So, we always recognize purchases as our expense. There are two systems. Some of them they recognize purchase as an expense, some of them they recognize as an asset. So, in uh, in periodic system, we record purchases as an expense. So is it decrease in economic benefit? Yes, because the intention is to sell it as soon as possible. It should be occurring, occurring during one year. It will have, if we have paid in cash, so it will have decrease your asset, but we are not paying in cash. Rather, we are purchasing on credit, so it will increase your liability and it will always decrease your equity. So, here we have purchase. So we recognize purchase as an expense and it is increasing. 
okay now those students or those people who think that whenever we make payment it is an expense now in this case we are not making any kind of payment we are not paying cash but still we are recognizing purchase as an expense so it means we do not consider the movement of cash while recognizing expense or income just have a look at it again in this definition do we talk about the movement of cash just have a look at the definition of expense are we talking about the movement of cash are we talking about making any payment no we are not talking about making any any kind of payment so you can see that criterion criteria for recognizing expense it should be movement in economic benefit during the during one period it should have a decreasing effect of an asset it should be it should have increasing effect on liability and your equity will always decrease so just have a look at the income are we talking about any any kind of receipt of cash no so that is why we call it accrual assumption accrual assumption doesn't have to do any kind of relationship with cash the only thing we need to remember whenever we pay cash it means cash is our current asset which is decreasing and if you are receiving cash so cash is our current asset which is increasing now again just have a look here again in this particular scenario we are not making any kind of payment so if you are not making any kind of payment still we are recognizing it as an expense why because purchase is fulfilling the criteria of recognizing as it as an expense on the other hand we are not paying cash so our current liability is increasing which is what we have discussed in the in the recognition of an expense and it is all it is increasing because we are purchasing on credit so it will be increasing now how do we put in the ledger account just have a look here so what was the amount by the way mm -hmm. just have a look here three thousand yeah you are absolutely right now brother three thousand we put on the debit side and we write here purchases expense account now when we recognize purchase as an expense there will have been i mean there there will be two effects the first effect it will have that your asset will be decreasing or your liability will be increasing so in this particular case our liability is increasing so we'll write here trade payable current liability current liability account right so now you can see we have yes now we can see we have added two ledger account the first one is purchase account yeah 3000 is being appeared on the debit side of the purchase account and the reference is trade payable current liability and if you have a look at this current trade payable account so 3000 is being appeared on the credit side and the reason is purchases account so ledger account will always talk about few things four things number one which particular account you are talking about which kind of movement 